Hi everyone, it's Miss Rush. Today I was thinking about the season that we're in. Right now we're in a season called spring. Spring comes right after winter and right before summertime. Spring is a really special season because lots of things start to happen in spring. One of the things that starts to happen is the weather starts to get a little warmer. Even if you live where I do, where it's snowing right now, it's still springtime because the weather is going to get warmer and warmer and warmer, even with some of the snow. Also, some plants start to grow. I have some tulips growing at my house right now. Tulips are a flower, not the kind of a plant. You might also see the trees are starting to get buds on them, and then those buds will turn into leaves. Another thing that starts to happen is many animals have their babies during this time of year. And I thought of a book that I could share with you about baby animals. It's called Baby Animals. And this is a nonfiction book. So my friends at Inspire Elementary will know what that means. They know that that means it's a fact book. It's going to teach us things about baby animals. It's not a story. It's not a story like a book like The Three Little Pigs that tells us the story of three pigs and it's made up. It's not true. These three little pigs did not really exist and build houses. It's just fun to read and it's a good story, but it's called a fiction book. So if it's not true, it's fiction. If it's a fact book, it's true. It's called nonfiction. So we're going to read this nonfiction book called Baby Animals. It says, look, a baby. Some babies snuggle on snowy sheets of ice. Some babies cuddle in warm, cozy dens. Others live in nests high in trees. You might be able to start listening for some baby birds in trees. You might be able to notice when you look up really high their nests. Some babies toddle and trot on grassy hills and plains. It's a baby rhino. If you live where I do, you might know that the Denver Zoo has a new baby rhinoceros. Splash! And some leap and swim through wavy seas. <gasps> Feed me! All baby animals have to eat to grow, just like you. Baby birds gobble up food their parents bring them, such as tasty bugs or fish. Which would you rather eat? Fish, worms, or bugs? Hmm. What would you rather have? I think I'd rather have fish. Because sometimes I do eat fish. This says, mmm, a moth makes a fine meal for a baby bird. This one says, how wide can you open your mouth? Open wide for a delicious bug. Ready? Let's see how wide we can make our mouths. Ready, set, go. Ooh, that was really wide. I bet you could get lots of bugs with that wide mouth. This bird is bringing its chicks a yummy frog for dinner. There's that frog. Some baby animals are called mammals. They drink milk from their mothers. Bears, cheetahs, and whales are mammals, and so are humans. Let's rub noses. Orca babies stay close to their moms. How many cheetah cubs do you see in this picture? Wow, look at all those baby cheetah cubs. They're all gathered around to have some milk from their mom. This mama bear has three cubs to feed. How many children are in your family? Do you have any brothers or sisters? Do your parents help feed you guys? Some baby animals can walk soon after they're born. This giraffe and the zebra, once they're born, can walk right away. Some need a lift from mom and dad. I know baby humans need to be carried by their moms and dads. And look, this baby lion cub. It can't walk when it's born, so the mom is very careful and she picks the baby up with her mouth. Hey, 
hang on! Some babies bounce along, snug in their mother's pouch. Other babies have to hang on tight. Boing, boing, boing. Can you jump like a wallaby? Boing, boing, boing. Wallabies look like kangaroos. They're a little different. They're a little smaller. Oh, look up here. There's a sloth and its baby. The baby's holding on tight. And down here, it looks like a chimpanzee and its baby. There they go. <laughs> Bath time! When you were a baby, your parents kept you neat and clean. They bathed you and washed your hair. Some animal parents keep their babies tidy too. But you might be surprised by how they do it. Look up to this one. Mother elephants give their babies dust baths. The dirt helps protect their skin. How do you keep your skin and hair clean? Do you take a dust bath? Do you take a water bath? To keep her baby clean, a monkey mom picks the dirt and insects off of its skin and fur. A mountain lion mother uses her tongue instead of a washcloth to clean her cub. How do you think it would feel to be licked by a mountain lion? Look at her tongue. Her tongue is really big. And if her tongue is like another cat that I know, a house cat, it's kind of scratchy. I wonder if being licked by a mountain lion would be like being licked by a house cat and be really big and, and scratchy. Baby animals have a lot to learn, from jumping to climbing. How high can you climb? As high as baby bears? Baby bears have sharp claws to help them grip tree trunks. Have you ever climbed a tree? I've climbed a tree before, but I don't have very sharp nails to help me climb like the baby bears do. I bet they're better climbers than me. From swimming to flying, they have to learn to do that too. What do you think this water feels like? Would you want to swim in it? Oh, I can see ice all around this water. I think that water would feel cold. I would not want to swim in that water. Ready, set, flap. This eagle chick is testing its wings, practicing for the day it will fly out of the nest. It's practicing to see how his wings work. It says, it's playtime. Some babies swing and scamper through the trees. Look at that baby monkey. He's playing in the trees. It's also going to help him practice how to climb trees and swing in them. Growl! Some baby animals pretend to fight. They tumble and tussle and wrestle and bite. Pretend fighting helps baby animals learn to hunt. Sometimes it can be fun to pretend to wrestle with your friends, huh? These baby animals do that too, but they do it because they're going to have to hunt for their food one day and that helps them learn. You can play to learn. Animals play to learn and humans play to learn. My turn! As they grow older, baby animals learn to find food for themselves. Some babies watch and copy their mothers as she eats grass, leaves, or fruit. How do you think a baby elephant brings grass to its mouth? Hmm. Doesn't have hands like we do with our thumbs to grab. What do you think it uses? Oh, I know. I bet it grabs the food, the grass, with its trunk. How high can you stretch your neck? High enough to reach juicy leaves? Let me see you stretch your necks really tall. Well, not as tall as a giraffe. Others learn to dig for worms or bugs. Some other animals teach their babies how to catch fish or hunt. This young fox caught a mouse dinner all by itself. 
Meerkat's parents teach their babies how to scratch in the dirt to find insects to eat. This one says, Hey, Mom, what are you hunting for? Seals again? Polar bears hunt for seals in the ice to eat. The world is full of things for babies to explore and sniff and touch and taste. See a baby moose, a baby fox, a baby crocodile, and my favorite animal, a baby panda. Ah, there's nothing like a sweet smelling flower. Do you like to smell flowers? Me too. Flowers can smell so wonderful, especially in the springtime when they're all starting to grow. All that learning and playing and exploring can make a baby tired. Baby animals need their sleep just like you. It's important to sleep when you've been playing and working hard because then you can, you can grow. This is the name game. So I'm going to show you these animals and tell you what the babies are called because the babies have different names. So. A baby zebra is a foal. A baby wallaby is a joey. Also a baby kangaroo is a joey. A baby elephant is a calf. A baby deer is a fawn. A baby owl is an owlet. And a baby lion is a cub. All right, that's the end of our baby animals book. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Bye.